Welcome to another video from ultimateged.com. In this video, we will be looking at some common GED math questions. Please, it's important you try all the questions. You can also get the full course with over 200 step-by-step -step videos covering all the topics you need to pass the GED math test at ultimateged.com. Okay, let's dive in. In a basketball practice session, two players, player X and player Y, were practicing free throws. Player X attempted 60 free throws and successfully made 33 of them. Player Y attempted 30 free throws and made 18. Based on their shooting percentages, who is the more accurate free throw shooter? A. Player X B. Player Y C. Both have the same shooting percentage D. Cannot be determined Comparison questions are common on the GED math. Here, you've been told to compare based on their shooting percentage. To find the shooting percentage, we have to divide the number of successful shots by the total number of attempts and multiply it by 100. From the question, player X has attempted a total of 60 free throws. Out of these, player X has successfully made 33 shots. To calculate player X shooting percentage, divide the number of successful shots, 33, by the total number of attempts, 60, then multiply by 100. We do this on the calculator to get 55%. So player X shooting percentage is 55%. From the question, player Y has attempted a total of 30 free throws. Out of these, player Y has successfully made 18 shots. To calculate player Y shooting percentage, divide the number of successful shots, 18, by the total number of attempts, 30, then multiply by 100. We do this on the calculator to get 60%. So, player Y shooting percentage is 60%. Based on the calculated shooting percentages, player Y is the more accurate free throw shooter. The correct answer is therefore B, player Y. Please encourage us to post more videos by liking, sharing, and subscribing. We really appreciate it. A rectangular field is to be fenced. The length of the field is twice its width. If the width of the field is represented as s meters, what expression represents the total amount of fencing needed to enclose the entire field? A. 2s plus 4. B. 6s. C. 6s plus 2. D. 4s plus 2. Questions in which the answer is an expression is also common on the GED. You have to be familiar with geometry word problems that requires you to find the area or perimeter. Here, we are talking about fencing, so the question is about perimeter. If the question was, how much grass will cover the field, we will be looking at the area. The formula for perimeter will be given to you on the GED. This is twice the length plus twice the width. From the question, we are told that the width is s so we can replace the width with s. From the question, we are told that the length of the field is twice its width. So length equals two times width. But we know that the width is s, so this will be length equals two s. We put this into the perimeter formula. We have two times two s plus two times s, two times two s is four s. So we have four s plus two s. This will give us six s. Therefore, the expression that represents the total amount of fencing needed to enclose the field is 6s. So the correct answer is B. A spinner is divided into eight equal sections, numbered from one through eight. If the spinner is spun, what is the probability of it landing on an even number? A, one over four. B, 1 over 2, C, 3 over 4, D, 1 over 8. To pass the GED, you must be familiar with solving probability questions. To find the probability of landing on an even number, we need to count how many even numbers there are on the spinner, and then divide that by the total number of sections on the spinner. 
We are told the spinner has eight sections numbered one to eight. Even numbers are simply multiples of two. The even numbers between one and eight are two, four, six, and eight. So, there are four even numbers. Therefore, the probability of landing on an even number is the number of even sections, four, divided by the total number of sections, eight. We can simplify the fraction. Reduce by four. Four divided by four is one. Eight divided by four is two. The probability of the spinner landing on an even number is one over two. So the correct answer is B, one over two. A cylindrical tank has a height of 10 meters and a diameter of 6 meters. The tank is filled with water up to a height of 8 meters. What is the volume of the water in the tank? A. 150.72 cubic meters. B. 226.08 cubic meters. C. 282.60 cubic meters. D. 339.12 cubic meters. Let's have a pictorial representation of the information given. Taken this as our cylinder. The height given is 10 meters and the diameter is 6 meters. The water is only filled to 8 meters of the height of the cylindrical tank. Note that liquids take the shape of the container in which they fill. So the diameter of the water will be the same as that of the cylindrical tank, which is 6 meters. The formula for finding the volume of the water is pi r squared h. Pi has been given to us. It is 3.14. We know the height as 8 meters. We don't know the radius. However, we have been given the diameter of the cylinder as 6 meters. Radius is diameter divided by 2. So the radius is 6 over 2, which is 3. Substituting the values, we have 3.14 times 3 squared times 8. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. This gives us 3.14 times 9 times 8. Now to get the volume of the water, we multiply 3.14 by 9 and by 8. And this gives us 226.08 meter cube as the volume of the water. So the correct answer is B. 226.08 cubic meters. What inequality is represented by the number line? A. Negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3. B. Negative 4 is greater than x, which is greater than 3. C. Negative 4 is less than x, which is less than 3. D. Negative 4 is greater than or equal to x, which is greater than or equal to 3. There are three things we are looking at here. The first is the end points. Here, we have negative 4 and 3. We can see that all the answer choice have negative 4 and 3, so we cannot eliminate any of the choices. Next, we look at if the end point is shaded or not shaded. If it is shaded, then the inequality must have an equal sign. If it is not shaded, then the inequality does not have an equal sign. Both endpoints are not shaded, so we can eliminate choice A and choice D. They have equal sign. Finally, we pick a number to represent our X. The number must fall on the line we are writing the inequality for. I will use one. You can use any of these numbers. Check which answer choice will be true. For choice B, we have negative 4 is greater than 1, which is greater than 3. This statement is not true. Negative 4 is not greater than 1, and 1 is not greater than 3. This leaves option C as the answer. We can verify. We are still using 1 for x. Negative 4 is less than 1, which is less than 3. This statement is true so we confirmed that C is the answer. Jenny is saving money for a new bike. She already has $50 and plans to save $10 each week. Write an equation that represents the total amount of money M that Jenny will have after X weeks. A. M equals 50X plus 10. B. M equals 10X plus 50. 
C. M equals 50x minus 10. D. M equals 10x minus 50. This is a two-step equation that is very common on the GED. We cover it extensively on our GED math course. Please check it out at ultimateged.com to learn all the twist to two-step equations word problems and much more. For this question, there are three parts. The total. Here, we have been told it is m. So we have m equals. Next, we have the recurring. This is the value that keeps repeating. This is the value with the x. We have $10 each week. So this will be 10x. Then finally, we have our constant. Here, it is $50. Since she has the $50, we will have plus 50. Therefore, option B is the answer. M equals 10x plus 50. What is the y-intercept of the graph? A, 1. B, negative 1. C, negative 2. D, 2. The correct answer is D2. The y-intercept is the point where the line meets the y-axis. This is our y-axis. The line meets the y-axis at this point. The value here is 2, therefore the y-intercept is 2. You could have been asked to find the x-intercept. This is simply the point the line meets the x-axis. So this will be that point. Therefore the x-intercept is 1. Find the slope of the line passing through the points 2, 4, and 6, 5. A, 1 over 4. B, 1 over 2. C, 1. T, 2. The correct answer is A, 1 over 4. To find the slope of a line given two points, we will use the slope formula. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Formulas are given on the GED, so don't worry too much about it. Please note that you can call any of the point 1 or 2. I'm choosing this as 1 and this as 2. We know that when you have a point, the first value is your x and the second value is your y. Since we are calling this point 1, we will have x1, y1 here. Same thing for this. Since we are calling this our point 2, we can call this x2, y2. We just put the values into the formula. We have 5, which is y2, minus 4, which is y1, divided by 6, which is x2, minus 2, which is x1. We simplify. 5 minus 4 is 1, over 6 minus 2, which is 4. So the slope is 1 over 4. What value of x will make the expression undefined? 2x plus 3 over x minus 2. A. x equals 2. B. x equals negative 2. C. x equals 3. D. x equals negative 3. For this expression to be undefined, the denominator must be 0. You cannot have a 0 denominator. So we can say that x minus 2 must be equal to 0. We solve for x. Add 2 to both sides of the equation. The 2 will cancel out. 0 plus 2 is 2. So x equals 2. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A line graph shows the sales of a product over 5 days. On day 1, the sales were 40 units, and they increased by 10 units each day. What were the total sales for the 5-day period? To know the sales made for all the five days, first, we have to know the sales units for each of the days. And after that, we add all the sales units. Since the number of days were five, number from one to five to represent the days. Now with the sales units, we are given that on day one, the sales were 40. But from day two to five, the sales units increased by 10 units each day. So for day two, Add 10 to the sales unit of day 1, which is 40 plus 10, and that will be 50. The same way, on day 3-2, the sales increased by 10 units. 
So add 10 to the second day's sales, which is 50 plus 10 equals 60. Likewise, add 10 to the 60 units for day 4, which is 60 plus 10 equals 70. Lastly, also increase the sales unit for day 4 by 10. That's 70 plus 10 equals 80. Now since we have the sales units for each day, put all the sales units together to get the total, which is 40 plus 50 plus 60 plus 70 plus 80, and that equals 300 units. Hence, the total sales units for the 5 days period is 300 units. We will end this video here. Thanks for watching. Please, don't forget to get the full course at ultimateged.com.